All right, boys and girls, this week we are going to be making birthday cakes. Now, um, this past week was Miss Ottenry's birthday on Friday, April 3rd, so happy birthday to me. And I thought it would be super fun if we would make birthday cakes. Now, I'm gonna use my lined paper, just like I have been. Underneath my lined paper, I actually took this paper and I put it on the back side and I slid it underneath. Because if we have, remember, when we use Sharpies, Sharpies go through paper. So you always should have something underneath what you're drawing on. Okay, so for this assignment, we're gonna talk a little bit about space. And when we talk about space, we're not talking about outer space. We're talking about space in art and how we use it to make it look like it is three-dimensional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a round cake and make it look three-dimensional. So I'm gonna draw with my paper the wide way instead of the tall way, because uh, we're gonna make a wider cake. So I'm gonna start with um, the straight sides of my cake. So my cake is gonna go almost all the way across. I'm gonna make a straight line from here, and then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing, and they're about the same size. Now, if you notice, guys, I am using a Sharpie this week, the reason I'm using a Sharpie this week is because I know that in my videos, we've been having a hard time seeing what I'm drawing. So I've got a Sharpie and we're gonna use that. Now, in order to make our cakes look 3D, now this is where Miss Ottenreath uh, sometimes turns her paper to help her draw. And see if we can zoom out. We wanna zoom out, okay. So I'm gonna draw a curved line this way. All right, so I'm gonna draw a curved line from side to side. That's the bottom of our cake. We're gonna flip our paper over again, and we're gonna draw a curved line also the same way. So it looks like somebody took a rectangle and squished it in a little bit. Now, this is the back of the cake, this is the front of the cake. And now we're gonna draw one more line that's gonna be a curved line in here and it's gonna create an oval shape or another word for that is an ellipse, but we'll call it an oval for now. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna draw to here and just make a rounded shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. And so that is a one layer cake that we're making, okay? Now I'm gonna put my cake on a cake stand um, or plate. So I'm going to draw a rounded shape from this side and it's going to follow the same line I've already drawn and do the same thing on that side. And then I'm going to make it look like it's on a cake stand. So I'm going to draw two curvy lines going that way. And remember guys, this doesn't need to be perfect. Now I'm going to leave the cake stand alone. Now we're going to make it look like it has drippy frosting on it. And we're going to do that by using wavy lines going from edge to edge. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go like this. Nice, big, not too small, wavy lines going across my cake. Okay, now I want there to be some uh, line patterns on my cake, okay? so. We're gonna make a Zen Tangle birthday cake. Now, Zen Tangle birthday cake is like the um, turtle cake or turtle drawing we made already. Turtle cake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate this into triangle shapes. So I'm gonna go up and down, and I'm gonna make a zigzag pattern underneath my drippy part. Now my drippy part, I'm gonna leave that made that short. It looks like it's wrapping around the side of the cake. I'm gonna leave the drippy part the a solid shape that's just going to be a color when we color it in now in here again we're going to practice our line patterns so if you have a sharpie you can do this a little bit differently so i'm going to make a v pattern and a letter zigzag pattern this one and i'm going to color in part of it And then I'm going to color in this bottom part. Okay. This one I'm going to do 
a dot pattern. Again, we're practicing our line patterns and then I'm going to do some straight lines across there. I like using the line paper for these projects um, because it helps us separate our spaces out when we're doing line patterns like this. And then this one, I think I'm going to do some big thick stripes. So I'm going to turn my Sharpie. I'm going to do stripes like this. This is a crazy cake, guys. I'm going to leave that drippy part alone. I'm not colored in the drippy part. Leaving that part alone. And then down here, I think I'm going to do vertical wavy lines. And then Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, hmm, this one's hard to choose. Let's do a square and color it in the square. Don't make your squares too big though. Um, and then this one, Let's do castle, a castle line. So over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, and then I stop because I ran out of space. And then over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, stop. And then this one starts like this, goes down, and like that. And then up here we have space where we can add some more. So we're going to follow our pattern. So this one, it would be up. And then this one would be down, over, up, over, down. Boop. And I think I'm going to color in some of these. So I'm going to color in this one. And I'm going to do stripes just like I've been doing. So you see how I'm, I'm continuously doing the same type of patterns where these have solid stripes. I know I didn't color these ones in very solidly, did I? Let's, let's fix that. I have solid stripes and then I have line patterns with dotted line patterns. Now you, I would like you to start these in black and white. If you don't have a black marker, or a black pen to use. You can use just colored pencil um, and use a black colored pencil. If you don't have a black colored pencil, you can just use your regular pencil to draw this and then color it in. Um, Cause I know not everybody has a marker or you can um, draw it with regular pencil then color it in with one color later if you have crayons or something. Whatever you have, choose one color to do go over your pencil lines if you have it. Oh, hello kitty. He likes to come help. All right, so this line pattern here, I think I'm gonna go and do lines going up this way. And see how I made them closer together than the one I did over there? And then this one, I think we'll do zigzags down. All right, so I need another solid stripe here. Hmm. I'm trying not to do a wavy line because I don't want to mix this part up. So let's do a, well, let's check our example list. What do we got? Wavy, curly, dashed. We could do a dash line. Let's do a dash line and I'm going to, oh, you know what? Let's do a checkerboard. Okay. So how I'm going to do a checkerboard is I already have my vertical lines. So my vertical lines are the ones that are going up and down. So now I'm just going to draw across to create squares. Okay. And now I'm going to pick squares and then I'm going to color them in. And Ramon, you do a checkerboard pattern. Color in your squares on a diagonal. So you can see 
how I'm coloring them in. When you do it on a diagonal, it helps us to keep our patterns together, okay? Instead of coloring all over. So do it on a diagonal and finish that entire diagonal row before you move on to the next one. That way you don't get confused and make a mistake. All right. Hmm, this one I think I'm going to do one of my favorite ones to do. I can't really see it in there. And I do, you can do this too, where you outline your things. And then I like to put polka dots in here. This is one of my favorite ones to do. I really like doing this design. But you can keep it simple and you can just do the same ones over and over again if you'd like. But it looks neat if you do a bunch of different things. Um, let's see. Hmm, I got two more to do. So this one we should keep it simple. So I'm gonna do just a horizontal stripe through there. And then that's good. Now this space here, I'm thinking I want to do diagonal lines. So, so let's do a diagonal line and, and do um Hmm. I'm going to do a diagonal wavy line. I know I said I didn't want to do that, but I can't really think of anything else. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up into really small. So it's, it's closer together and it won't look, um, it won't look the same. So again, I keep, some colored stripes. Now, if you notice in here, having the stripes on one side and line different, uh, more complicated line patterns on the bottom, you can do that in where you have these flip flopped, but it creates a large amount of contrast that makes it look really cool. And then here I'm gonna do I'm gonna do, hmm, I like doing the vertical lines. So let's do some vertical lines again. Maybe we should just do something simple like that. Do some vertical lines and then we'll just put some dots. Okay, so that's the bottom part of our cake. Like I said, we're gonna leave this drippy because I think that looks pretty neat like that. Now the top part of our cake, I think we're going to, we're going to leave this plain as well. So I think we're going to draw and we're going to add some candles. Um, with art, if you draw accent pieces, it's always a good idea to draw them in groups of three. And the reason I say that is because, or odd numbers at least, because in art, it looks better to have things not in even numbers. Okay. So if you look at it, I have even numbers. And it's because when you do this, it's not in the middle. So it looks a little weird, although it's pretty close. And then on top, I'm going to just draw a line for the candle wick. I'm not going to draw a wick on my candle because I don't have enough space to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some lines in here. This one looks like it can use some straight lines. Uh, let's do these diagonally. Now, if you don't have a marker, you can erase the lines that you've drawn in there. Um, and because I have a marker, I have to kind of work with what I've got. Okay, so I'm going to do some stripes in here. So I'm going to just make this look like I always intended that to be there. And then I'm going to hide my line with my marker by making some stripes. Do the same thing here. 
Okay, now this one. This one, let's see, let's do, we'll do straight across stripes. And then color those in. Now, if you keep it simple with your designs, um, they look a little bit better. They look super difficult, but they really, really aren't, I promise. And then this one just says vertical stripes. So let's, let's just make some more and then we can go a little bit crazier with this one. So you see guys, not every time do you have something in your art, it's not always a mistake. Sometimes you have to, you have to work with what you got. Okay. And then this last one's got curved lines in it. So I'm going to make that one slightly more curved. And then let's put, I'm going to put some zigzags in there. Make it a little bit more interesting to look at. But it doesn't have to have zigzags. You can do whatever you like. And then the cool thing is if you have crayons or colored pencils or watercolor or whatever you have, you can go through and you can color in your uh, project. Now, my favorite color is violet. And since this is my birthday cake, I think I should color it in violet. Let me find my violet crayon. This one's purple. That'll work if that's the one I can find. What is this one? Violet. Okay, so here's my violet one. And I'm gonna have violet frosting. So remember, when we color in our projects, we want to color in going the same direction. Now, if you notice, I'm going, I'm coloring vertically. And the reason I'm coloring vertically, um, oh, that's my dishwasher, sorry guys. The reason I'm coloring in vertically is because I just feel like that's the best way to go. You can color horizontally as long as we are not scribble scrabbling. So I'm going to make this straight across the bottom here. Now I'm not coloring in the black and white areas. I'm leaving those black and white so that we have a little bit of color and we have contrast. Now, if we remember in class, we talked about emphasis as well. So what I'm doing, with adding one color to my project is I am creating emphasis on the area that doesn't have any drawing in it. Emphasis is where your eyes are drawn to one area over others. Now this is a very decorated birthday cake. So the emphasis that I'm creating with the frosting is going to uh, not only bring contrast, but it's also going to make it more interesting to look at. Instead of just leaving it white, we're creating emphasis by making one change. Now, emphasis can be done in more than one way, of course, but this is how we're going to do it. We're emphasizing our frosting. Okay. I'm going to do... Same thing for down here. We're not gonna color our cake stand. We're just gonna color that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna finish coloring this and then I'm going to show you my finished product when I'm done. Okay, this is my finished birthday cake. And like I said, today we worked with line we worked with a little bit of shape a little bit of shape 
Um, cause we talked about ovals and, um, rounded lines to create shapes. Um, and we made rectangles here. We talked about emphasis with adding one color for emphasis. We talked about patterns because that's what we created here. And we did a lot of new stuff today. Um, well, you know, it's not new stuff. We just used it in a new way today. So that's a pretty fun and easy birthday cake that you can make. And it's a, it can be challenging, but you guys do the best you can. Love you. Have a good day. Bye.